May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and as you saw, Carrie Recaro of the Chicago Red Stars is doing absolutely incredible work to not only raise awareness, but to affect actual change in NWSL, and we are absolutely honored to have her join Morning Footy right now. Carrie, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, as we saw in that video, uh, the work that you're doing is is really, really remarkable. Now it's it's actually available for, for athletes if they are experiencing mental health issues. They can now get mental health breaks the same way you would for any other injury, which is which is really, really incredible and so important. Carrie, this all stems from your own personal experience. If, if you could, would you kind of uh, share your journey with us and how we got to this point we are at today? Yeah, so like I said in that video back in 2019, I wasn't mentally ready to play. I was planning on taking a leave of absence and then potentially returning when I felt ready. And as I started to see what that process looked like, I quickly learned that I was no longer going to be employed basically. And I was going to be without pay and benefits, almost as if I just like wasn't on the team. And so for me, luckily, I ended up coming, not taking the leave, pushing myself through that to kind of say like, you know what, I need a job. So I'm going to try to come back and play, which I had the support of my teammates and coaches. And I did so, but I felt like other players might not necessarily have that luxury. And to have to feel like you have to choose between your mental health and the way you make money just seems so like absurd to me that it was one or the other. And so as time went on and we started um, with the CBA negotiations, I reached out to my player reps and I was like, hey, you guys, this happened to me a couple of years ago. And I've never understood it since because I've been watching players tear their ACLs or have these major surgeries and they would leave market and go get the help that they needed. And then they would come back like months later. And I was like, you've been on the roster the whole time, getting paid the entire time, but you left market to do what was best for you physically. So why couldn't we have the exact same thing for our mental health? And that's when I really started asking questions and kind of pushing for this. And it, I think it was one of the things that got approved like quite early on in the CBA. And now players have that luxury to take up to six months paid mental health leave, which I know players have already used it, which makes me feel really good. Carrie, I've, I've seen mental illness, um, you know, being around my family since I was a kid. And I, I think it's important for people to, to know what does that mean? How, how, how do you know if you have uh, mental health issues or how do you deal with them? Because, you know, I, I've, I've seen it. It's hard to, to figure that out. I, in college, I had a, a knee injury. Um, and I was I was depressed. I was clinically, clinically depressed, and it wasn't it wasn't until my coach um, started digging and prying and, and, and getting me back on track that I was able to pull through. So how do, how do you know that you you have a, a problem and that you need help? Yeah, something similar kind of happened to me when I got to college. I really struggled with the transition, and I think it's something that like you slowly start to not feel like yourself. But it's really important to know that mental illness doesn't discriminate. It can happen to anybody in the world, no matter what their life circumstances are. And it's something that can be debilitating. And the symptoms are very real, just like a physical injury. If I roll my ankle, I'm swollen, I'm bruised. I can't really walk very well. If you're depressed, it's like you're isolating, you can't eat, you're not sleeping well, you don't wanna get out of bed. Like those are real things and changes in behavior that you can start to notice in yourself that it, you just know you're not right. And it's something that's really important for people to communicate. And it's really hard when it's like a gradual change over time where you're like, okay, yeah, like I got injured and now I'm starting to feel sad. And then that sadness is like, wait, I'm having trouble like sleeping. Okay, and now I don't wanna go see my friends. And then it starts to like snowball into something where it's like, actually you've had a chemical imbalance in your brain now that has shifted the way you think that you are actually mentally ill and you need help and and it's important for people to kind of continue to educate themselves so they can notice it in other people and then for human beings to not feel afraid to necessarily speak up and seek help and know that they're not alone they're not the only ones that go through something like this and that there are ways out of it for sure there's always a way out Carrie, that's so beautiful, and um, I think one of the important things that you've kind of stressed is destigmatizing um, the idea of mental illness or, or needing mental health um, help. 
Uh, one of the biggest things I was curious about is how the reaction has been within the players that have used that help that you have now kind of created for the NWSL and how appreciative they are to make sure that this is a part of their um, pay. Yeah, I think in general, everyone was incredibly proud to get something like that into the CBA, as was I. I thought it was really wonderful to finally have an option like that. Obviously, because of conf confidentiality, I haven't really spoken to anyone that's used it, but I do know that there are players that have used it, and if they're using it, that means they're getting the help they need, which just makes me feel really good. Talk to me a little bit about your podcast, Butterfly Road, uh, a podcast that you uh, started, and it's about mental health. You know, when I first started a podcast uh, as a stand-up comic, I learned so much more about comedy so much quicker. What have you learned about mental health and just how other people have dealt with it? Yeah, that's really interesting you say, because when I did a lot of the episodes, I've learned more about some mental illnesses than I ever knew, which has been so incredible. But basically, my podcast is um, about destigmatizing mental illness in athletics specifically. But we kind of, Ginny, my co-host and I, we kind of, we don't always stay in the box of athletics. Sometimes we're talking about her work life or just like random things, but um, it's been really incredible to learn about other athletes that have struggled with mental illness and kind of tell their stories or bring athletes on to tell their stories or just general mental illnesses in general that I wasn't super familiar with the ins and outs of like ADHD or OCD, things we kind of just like joke around about and we're like, oh, do you have ADHD? Or like, oh my God, I have such OCD. It's like, oh, we actually did the research and these are these are real things and you have real symptoms, but it doesn't hold you back from living a normal life and, and being successful if you want to be. So that's been really, really fun to kind of educate myself in that way. Have you heard from any listeners? Because, you know, that's one of the big things that I always get from podcasts is these real personal stories you get of how it's helped, not just yourself, because you do glean something from the conversation, but the, fro the folks listening. Yeah, so when Jenny and I started it, we were kind of just like, let's do this as a hobby for fun. And if we can change one life, it's worth it. And we've obviously changed our own lives, so it's been worth it. But the amount of messages we've gotten, I was really surprised from friends. And then just through our Instagram and email, we've gotten DMs and emails just from random listeners that have been like, you saved my life or I listened to your podcast, like outpouring, especially the first year. And I kind of screenshotted all of them and put them together to show Ginny how much of an impact we're making. But for me still after games in the NWSL, I'll go sign autographs, even in other cities. And people will be like, I love your podcast. And to me, I'm like, I don't even care about the soccer game. Like that was the most meaningful thing to hear that day. I'm just like, oh my gosh, people are really listening to this. How massive has it been, Carrie, to kind of see um, how much we've grown? I feel like when we were in college, um, we really didn't speak about it. You know, all of us had something going on, especially being such high achieving people. We push ourselves in different ways. Um, but now just being able to speak out about it. I've spoken to my coworkers here. I have anxiety. I have anxiety about being on camera, about doing my job. And it's very much, I don't feel judged by it. I feel like they kind of um, are working with me and understand it more than maybe 10 years ago. Five years ago, I probably wouldn't have spoken out about it as much. And just to see where our society has gone with openly talking about mental illness and you taking a part in that. Yeah, it gives me hope because I feel like we have come a long way. And you're right, like everyone is going through something. Like if no one's life is perfect. So if you wake up and you're like, no, everything's fine. I'm not going through anything. I'm like, I don't really believe you. So there's no shame in being open about it because you're really not alone. And for me, when I got to college, that was kind of the first time I really dealt with anxiety and depression. I had a really hard time transitioning my freshman year. And then I started getting help at the health center. And I was like, wait, why doesn't everyone do this? Why am I shy about talking about this? I can kind of like shed light on this, this situation and let people know there are tools here to come like available for you to get better if you're struggling. And I'm like, for me at Notre Dame, everyone was struggling. Like we are just wired to want to be the best student athletes ever or just normal students there like you're you're definitely going to struggle at some point you're so i was just like that's when it really started for me like let me destigmatize getting help and show people that like you can get that help and need the assistance and you're not weak or whatever you just need a little bit of a boost to live your best life Carrie, you are uh, one match away from making 100 NWSL appearances, which is a pretty awesome accomplishment. But you're doing so much great work on and off the pitch. I'm just, I'm curious, what's your, what's been your proudest moment so far as a professional athlete within within that time frame? Oh my gosh, that's so hard. 
It's been a long eight years. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it'd be cliche to say like the championships would are the best part, but I think it is honestly the work I'm doing off the field because I always said, I want to leave this league better than I found it. That was always a goal of mine. I think when I came into the league, it was like, yeah, I want to make the national team. I want to play in a world cup. I want to win all these championships. And then as my career started to go on, even though I have won championships and done really great things in this league and been a part of amazing teams, I think what I'm most proud of is knowing that when I decide to walk away from the NWSL, that I made a long lasting forever impact on how things are for players and how they're treated. Respect, Carrie. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's incredible. Although, you should have gone to Boston College, not Notre Dame. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I did visit there. I did love BC. I do have a quick question, because you did mention before we came on air that you're a New York-style pizza fan, which means I, I would respect your opinion a little more. But uh, I need to know one quick answer. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? I don't think so. That's a no. I mean, I'll accept it, it. But it's not my favorite. Ugh, I'll accept it. Thank you. See, she did it in the right way. You're like, she said, I don't think so. That's, that means people who do like it, you're not alienating. Yeah, she's clearly like, more you're emotionally you're evolved than I am because I will shame you <laughs> until you I mean, put it down. I'm not going to order it. I'm never going to order it. Let's be clear. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> but this guy's like, you're, you're dead to me. Yeah, I, I, cut, I block you on my phone for a week or two, you know, oh. just... So I forget it. <laughs> Alexis has very, very high pizza standards, as you can tell. Uh, Carrie, thank you so very much for taking the time to join us today, and thank you for all the amazing work that you are doing. We are, we are really, really grateful. Keep leading.